Hello, my name is Connor Quinlan, and in this review I'm going to be doing a quick summary on what the ISO function does on your digital camera. Um, this review is for those of you who are new to digital SLR photography and are basically new to photography and getting to know your camera. So the first question that you might have about ISO is exactly what does it do? Well, ISO, ISO does a couple of things to affect both the shutter speed and the image quality of your image. For example, ISO 100 is the lowest ISO on the Nikon D300. The highest ISO is high 1.0, which is the equivalent of 6400 ISO. Now what's the difference between ISO 100 and ISO 6400? Well, there's actually a lot of differences. First of all, on ISO 100, the shutter speed is pretty slow. Right here, as you can see, it's only one-fifth of a second shutter speed. So the shutter speed is going to sound like this. That's a pretty slow picture. Also, on ISO 100, the amount of noise in the picture that you take at ISO 100 is going to be a lot less. There's almost going to be virtually no noise at all. And what noise basically is, is it's grain in the image. It basically looks like different colored grains of sand sprinkled onto the image. And the lower the ISO you have, the less of that there's going to be. And the higher your ISO, the more of that there's going to be. So, at ISO 6400, like it is at right now, as you can see, the shutter speed is now 1 320th of a second. That is 64 times faster than ISO 100. But, even though it is faster, it does come with a price. In order to get a faster shutter speed, you have to compensate for image quality. So at higher ISOs, like 6400 ISO, you're going to get a lot of noise or a lot of grain. Um, so all that different colored sand, basically, that you can imagine sprinkled all, your, all over your image is going to be very visible and very easy to spot in an image with such a high ISO. So the next question you might have is, when do I use certain ISOs? Well, if it's sunny outside, like it is right now, it's very, very sunny outside, very bright, you don't need to use higher ISOs. You can use ISO 100 to around ISO 200 for those sunnier conditions, so that way you don't have to compensate for image quality, because out in sunlight you're already going to have a very fast shutter speed. However, it's completely different for darker situations, like right now I'm in my room, and as you can see, the shutter speed is very slow. In fact, this is um, slow enough to where you won't be able to take the picture handheld. If you tried to take handhold the picture at one-fifth of a second, you would definitely get blur in your image. So, to compensate for that in lower light conditions, you want to adjust the ISO up. Say, ISO 800, which will be eight times faster than ISO 100. And as you can see, it has definitely gone up a lot by eight times. It went from one-fifth of a second to one-fortieth of a second. Now, one-fortieth of a second is something I can handhold in this condition, and I'll be able to take a picture. I will, I'm going to have to compensate for image quality, but now I won't get any blur in my image because I have a fast enough shutter speed. So that's basically how you make your decision on whether or not you should use a low ISO or higher ISOs.